Hello everyone. First, I have to make clear that I do not have any medical preconditions that could be attributed to the experience, schizophrenia, etc. I don't drink alcohol, do drugs, or abuse of any substance, nor believe in funky stuff or am part of any association related to UFO investigation. I am just a guy from a small town to happen to live this experience. In fact, I'm very skeptical of all these things unless there is proof or cross-checkable info. Just clearing out these since they are the classic deterrents used by deniers. So, this was late summer 2001, I was 16 years old and my house was being reformed so my sister and I had each other its own bedroom. My new bedroom used to be a storage room, no outside windows and only a door that lead to the house's main hallway which didn't have windows to the outside either. So, a night with very heavy rain and thunderstorm. I stayed awake until the radio station I listened to finished its programming at 1 a.m. I turned around bed for a long time. I wasn't sleepy, yet I was trying to. At about 2 a.m., I was laying on the bed facing upwards, wide awake, and my whole body was paralyzed. I tried to move, and call for my mother, but I couldn't speak either. A few seconds later, I begin slowly levitating, stiff as a wooden plank. I still remember the bed sheets slowly sliding aside. When I was about 30 centimeters above the bed, I took as reference a shelf where I had the radio and some books. I saw a flash of light inside the room and lost consciousness from there on. I woke up dizzy in a big room which looked made of very fine brushed aluminum walls. I could hear a hum as you would when close to a power station, but kind of muffled. I tried to move my body unsuccessfully, yet I could move my neck and head around. Everything was very realistic, I could tell it wasn't a dream. I looked towards my feet and realized I was in some sort of full metal bed with a bit of inclination upwards on the shoulders and head side. I wasn't strapped, but it wasn't necessary. I was immobile. I turned my head to my left and looked at the roof too. I could see it was a square room, but there were no doors nor windows. I turned to the right and to my surprise, I see another bed and there was a girl on it. She was in her underwear as I was and was unconscious. She was Caucasian, with dark wavy long to the elbows hair. I look at the room on her end, no windows or doors. It was a full metal box. I stare at her, hoping she will wake up and communicate. But as soon as she did and we made eye contact, she looks surprised and scared past me. I turn to my left again, and from a seamless door comes in one typical grey alien. It was wearing a platinum or silver-colored jumpsuit with a very thin wine-colored V-neck. The greys were about the size of an eight or nine-year-old child, 1.1 or 1.2 meters tall, and their movement was very organic and smooth. Big head and pitch black eyes, slim and long arms and fingers, can't remember the finger count after all these years. Very stereotypical except the jumpsuit. They were expressionless, but they somehow managed to transmit the feelings telepathically. The creature sensed my fear and immediately and telepathically said, Don't worry, everything will be fine. My fear turned to nervousness, but I wasn't afraid from that point on. For some strange reason, it was so polite it had this power to calm me down. It came close to me and walked around the bed to my right, standing between both beds. I look at the girl again, she's nervous too. I turn towards the door and another grey comes in. It doesn't look as friendly as the other. The first one calms me down again and says, again, telepathically, this won't take long, don't worry, everything will be fine. After that, it hovered its hand over my face and I fell into a deep sleep. I resisted, but it was impossible. I woke up in my bed, it was 7 a.m., and my whole bed was soaking wet. I was sweating from head to toe so bad that my underwear was heavy. 
I didn't piss myself because it didn't smell like urine and the bed was wet from the headrest to the feet as if somebody would have dropped a bucket. I was very agitated. My mother, who had just woke up, calls for me since she hears I'm not all right. I tell her it's fine, that I had a nightmare. In fact, I did think it had been a nightmare. So I go to the bathroom to wash my face and dry myself, and when I see myself in the mirror, I realize I was marked in my chest. I had two marks, an L-shaped one and a V-shaped one, one of four red dots, another of five. They didn't itch, hurt, or burn. They looked like tattoos. I get scared and go get a ruler, since they looked too perfect. In fact, they were. There was a perfect 5 mm separation between one dot and the other. The L was a perfect 90 degree angle, and the L a 45. They looked like made with a tool. I freak out, but my shame was less than my fear and surprise, so I tell my mother and show her. She's skeptical to the story, but decides to take me to a dermatologist for a review, just in case it was the beginning of any severe sickness. About a week after, we go. The marks were still there, the dots didn't hurt, burn or itch, but I did have a stinging pain every now and then. The doctor looks at them and recognizes she has never seen anything like it. Of course, I didn't tell anything about the event. She said that I should go for a checkup four months later. The dots disappeared from one day to the other before that. After that, I had two sightings, one on each of the following years, one with my father, the other with my cousin. From 2004 onwards, just radio silence, not a single sign, experience, sighting, anything. It's as if they forgot about me. Over all these years, I have pondered about many questions and have opened my mind even more. At first, I wondered why was I taken aboard that ship and who that girl was and where she was from. With time, I thought about other possibilities, not so narrowed down to our understanding. What if it wasn't a ship, but a lab somewhere else, on a base or a planet? What if the girl looked human but wasn't it? All are open possibilities. This was in Uruguay, South America, but the girl could have been from anywhere in the world, if not another very human-like alien from anywhere in the universe. All I know is that I was taken and marked, and that my strongest witness is this girl. I hope that she is alive, and I really hope this can get to her someday, and we can put the pieces of this puzzle together. All that given, she is from this planet. And if you think that I'm making this up, I don't judge you for not believing. I wouldn't if it wouldn't have happened to me.